crowd warmed up with a threat of cancellation of the concert. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> uh, but I, it's actually, it's great that uh, we all get, there's no tent, but we all get a poncho, and a poncho is like a tent, so there's actually 2,000 tents. So, yes. I hope it doesn't rain. Uh, pretty fun. Um, happy to be here uh, to read you from this book that I wrote. Um, it's a real book. I just am ready. Here it is. Uh, it's, the book is called It's Time. Uh, the first chapter is called Doctor Who's on First. Um, everyone died. But first, other things happen. Why does everyone in science fiction stories have weird names? said Janaclyn <laughs> to her partner, Bill Quilfenstrimmer, <laughs> as she leafed through the latest novel by Planet Bornk's most favorite and famous sci-fi author, Blake Blork Blork Moppenstuck. <laughs> Dave? What kind of name is Dave? <laughs> Why can't they use normal Borkian names like Pidgelwick or Carplowonk? Why does being in space make people's brains all weird? Bill Quilfenster was about to answer, but just then the alarm went off. It was time. Not like it was time to wake up like an alarm clock going off. No, like it was time to respond to the alarm that didn't always go off, but that meant that something was going wrong with the time stream. Understand? Like, have you ever gotten a phone call? Uh, when something went wrong at the hospital, and they say, it's your great-grandmother, which means that there's something about your great-grandmother that needs addressing. Well, this was like that, except in this case, the patient was time. Time <laughs> itself. That's what it was time meant. If you'll remember the book's called It's Time, which is a different tense than it was time, but there is something wrong with time. Or there will be or was. So... <laughs> It also might be confusing that patient means multiple things, uh, like the patient at the hospital, uh, and patient like patience, like waiting for something in time. But there was no time for this confusion now. No time to be patient, for the patient was time. Oh, <laughs> did I mention, which is pretty good for a book to not know if it mentions something, but uh, did... I can check back, but I, 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 I'm in the moment. I'm in the moment, or am I? I? Who can say wait, which which moment was I? I, I? Boy, I really was in the future moment. So, did, did I mention, this is all in the book. Oh, did I mention, I write like I talk. Oh, did I mention, you can look at my, well, did I mention that Jacqueline and Bill Quilfenster were time doctors, and not like Doctor Who, who is a doctor that travels through time, and look, we all travel through time. <laughs> Some of us just do it in one direction mostly, forward at one second per second, traveling with the current. But of course, like salmon can swim upstream through space, there are some time salmon beings who can swim up the time stream. Oh, and did I mention uh, that these time doctors are time doctors because of the fact that they are time salmon beings who can travel up the time stream and also down it, like regular, and also side to side. Fish don't go just in a straight line. You know, you know this. You, you, my audience who bought the book. You, I know you. You, you know things like, I, also I just told you, so you know it. You, you certainly know it now. If you're like, I still don't know it, then how did you even hear me? You know, uh, so you may have heard stories before uh, about maybe uh, time police where people go and fix chronal, or uh, chronal, uh, it's writing, you don't have to pronounce it right, chronal, chronal, chronal problems with an aggressive mindset, but that just ends up causing more uh, ripples of unfortunate. So one of the first things that the time doctors helped cure was this malady, the malady of the time police, making it so that the universe had never even heard of the chronological industrial complex. In fact, what am I talking about? I've never even heard of what I'm talking about. What's a time police? Time doctors. That's what we're talking about, time doctors. So, the alarm is going off. Jan and Bill are reacting. But is it too late? Well, if it is, they can go back to when it's earlier. But this time might be different. This time, what happened to their names? Jan and Bill? This time, those are weird names. This time, is all of time itself dying at the same time? Or different times which are also this time that it is? 
everyone dies, and then other things happen, end of page one. So, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Please welcome our next author, Emily Flake. Hi, hi everybody, hi Red Team. Uh, so, Jean Grey very generously lent me this visor as a prop for mine because I am doing bad Hunter S. Thompson. Hunter S. Thompson is a genre, right? Alright, this is Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, but bad. <laughs> we were approximately 15 or 16 miles outside Barstow, California. We had taken drugs. The drugs we had taken were water acid, mescaline, cocaine, various pills, alcohol, and ether. While we were driving, we began to feel the effects of these drugs. My drug experience included bats. <laughs> That's weird that you guys got really into that. The bats weren't really there, but they looked and sounded real to me because of the drugs. I was with my attorney. Because he enjoys a tan, he was pouring beer on himself, because that's supposed to help. I asked him to switch with me so he could drive, even though he was covered in beer and I wasn't. I was worried that he might experience that too, even though it's unlikely that we would share hallucinations. I didn't say anything about it. We were driving a convertible, which was red and large. We were driving the car from Los Angeles, California to Las Vegas, Nevada. I am a journalist and had been sent to cover an event there. The publication had paid to rent the car and given me a statement, which is customary. You <laughs> tell this is from a long time ago because that's not customary anymore. <laughs> we spent most of the statement on the drugs I listed above. <laughs> there are several places in Los Angeles to buy drugs. We visited most of them because we like to collect drugs. <laughs> As I've mentioned, one of the drugs we purchased was ether. Ether is very bad for you. We had done most of the other drugs, though, and it was ether's turn. <laughs> we plan to balance out the effects of the ether with bits of ammo, and in that way keep ourselves focused and entertained for our drive. We were also playing music. We had the car radio playing, but also a tape player playing Sympathy for the Devil, because that's the only tape we had. This produced a cacophony that paired well with all the drugs. We tried to maintain a steady pace of driving. Then we saw a hitchhiker. My attorney saw him first. We pulled over to pick him up, and he was very excited because he had never ridden in a convertible before. He seemed like a farmer kid who hadn't had a lot of experience with the rest of the world yet. Because of this, I was concerned that my attorney might be scaring him. If he did scare him, we were probably going to have to murder him. <laughs> Wait, had I said that aloud? Thank you. Thank you, Mark uh, This next writer is an up-and-comer. We thought we would give him a chance. Through his, through his show stuff. I think he's really going places. Uh, please welcome Pat Roffles. That's not true. <laughs> Paul pinged me and said, hey, we're going to do this thing where people write parts of books that don't exist. And <laughs> So, uh, I will say, like, sometimes, like, the podcasters or the comedians, they say, like, don't, don't record this because this is their 
livelihood, they're really good at it, and they don't want you putting their good things somewhere else. So I'm going to ask a similar thing for a different reason. <laughs> I'm going to do a thing here. My, my hope was like maybe if I wrote something kind of a little fun, silly, try to try to get back into it a little bit. But it's not very good. So if you don't record it, that'd be great. And then after not recording it, if you also don't put it anywhere, that'd be great. <laughs> So if you saw somebody who was excited and you're curious about what just happened, you can ask them about it for the rest of you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Pat. It's quite a scoop. The next book in the Harry Potter series. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Superpowers of the Mary Sue, I guess. My show. I thought you guys were the antagonistic crowd. I didn't like that. Um, that's more like it. Uh, this next one um, was written, as we said, we, we do this as Worst First Chapter when we do it at San Francisco Sketch Fest. Uh, this was written for last year's Sketch Fest, and I uh, finally decided let's just bring it here because it is very relevant to your interests. Please welcome our next writer, Jonathan Coleman. Space Cruise, a food retail box 7A61B adventure. <laughs> food retail box 7A61B, or 61B to its friends, trained its keen mechanical robot eye on the prow of the enormous luxury space liner and robotically exclaimed, Bezos Christ, that's a big shit. <laughs> Bezos was a reference to Jeff Bezos because it was the year 25,011 and instead of Jesus Christ, everybody said Bezos Christ now because of Amazon. Since it was the future, all space liners were big, but this one was even bigger. It was so big that the teeny massive robots that filed robotically through the boarding area looked like ants. To be fair, some of them were robotic ants, but that's not what I'm talking about. Even the larger robots of regular shapes look like ants, size-wise, by comparison to the huge luxury space liner mentioned earlier. 61B continued its robotic reverie. I never thought I'd get to go, but here I am, the 23,000th Joko Cruise. <laughs> beep, beep, boo, beeped a small, cute-looking contraption hovering in midair over 61B's left shoulder. And who was this adorable little mechanized friend? It was 61B's robotic pal, Pippo. <laughs> ha ha, I know, agreed 61B. You're absolutely right about that, and that's a hilarious way of putting it. <laughs> Pippo had made a joke, but it, in its own robotic language of beats and boops, that only other robots could understand. It was a very funny joke, but let's move on. <laughs> 61B picked up its robo robo-bag, and continued to shuffle robotically along through the queue, or line, of robots who were going on the 23,000th Joko Cruise. Pippo, do you know the history of the Joko Cruise? Pippo bit, bit boop weedle dee, which meant, yes, of course, but I never get tired of hearing the story. <laughs> ha ha, me either, 61B said, laughingly. Well, as you know, Joko stands for Jonathan Colton, the famous singer-songwriter from the turn of the 21st century, whose impact on popular music was so important that he is still remembered fondly today, 23,000 years later. 61B exposited explainingly. <laughs> he started an annual cruise called the Joko Cruise, a week of music, comedy, and general nerdery on the high seas. Everyone agrees that the ones that happened in 2020 and 2021 were the two best ones. <laughs> and also that they were equally great. <laughs> Booby? queried Pippo in its language of beats and boots. 
That's right, I remember that too, from our history books, agreed 61B, confirmingly. When Jonathan Colton read his famous worst first chapter on the 2020 Joko Cruise, and he got the famous standing ovation that lasted for over 90 seconds, that was the very same day that onboard booking opened for the 2021 Joko Cruise. Which was good because it was selling out fast. Boopy <laughs> boo, people booped wonderingly. Yes, six one B confirmed, but not all of them took advantage of that opportunity. <laughs> in later years, a lot of humans regretted not booking in time. <laughs> People's actuators drooped sadly, and he beeped boo boo. Six one B nodded his robot head and agreed. I feel sorry for them too. Just then, a giant door opened on the side of the luxury space liner, and an electronic fanfare played, which was the tune of Jonathan Colton's famous song, Still Alive, from a famous video game called Portal. Thank you. A hush fell over the crowd of robots, all of whom dropped to whatever passed for their knees and bowed their robotic heads, as had been the custom for thousands of years. A platform extended out from the door, and a tank with the floating head of Jonathan Colton was wheeled out by an entourage of a dozen very sexy robots. It's him, whispered 61B reverently. Holy shit, said Debo. Jonathan Colton's head was just as good looking as it had always been. His perfect beard glinted and glowed in the tank lights. Wisps of his shaggily handsome hair waved gently in the unseen currents of the body temperature preserving fluid that kept his face from decomposing. His hair was not even thinning that much because he had started taking Propecia in 2018 out of vanity. The dozen sexy robots formed a circle around Jonathan Colton's head tank and plugged their hands into each other's hands using special robot hand plugs. A quiet buzzing noise got louder and louder until a blue spark of lightning arced from all twelve of their heads to an antenna on top of the tank. Jonathan Colton's eyes opened and he smiled winningly. Welcome to Joko Cruise 25,011, said Jonathan Colton's head from inside his tank. His voice was broadcast over a loudspeaker in the boarding area so that all the robots could hear it because he was making an announcement. You can probably edit that sentence out later. <laughs> Once a year, I emerge from an eternal darkness to say hello to all my robot friends and to wish you a very fun week of music and comedy and general nerdery on the high seas of space. I am very glad that when you killed all the humans, you decided to keep my head alive in a tank for your entertainment. The thousands of robots in the boarding area clapped and cheered excitedly for their hero. The dozen sexy robots began to wheel Jonathan Colton's head tank back into the luxury space liner. Jonathan Colton's eyes darted around frantically. Please, I beg of you, unplug this tank and let me die. <laughs> he joked. Release me from this prison. Don't send me back into the eternal darkness. Everyone laughed at his quips. <laughs> then the 12 sexy robots covered his tank with black velvet and turned off his microphone as well as all of the lights inside his tank. People laughed in a special language of beeps and boops, and 61B laughed in regular English because they knew it was going to be the best Joko cruise ever, with the exception of the Joko cruises that took place in 2020 and 2021. <laughs> Thank you very much.
That was 30 seconds, but you get the fucking idea. 